Hello noble ones and welcome to Metatron's Academy. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about the differences between modern Greek and modern Italian and how close these two languages are and whether there is any level of intelligibility. First and foremost I'd like to say that as an Italian people in Italy have definitely a relatively strong connection to Greece and Greek in the sense that not only there are lots of loan words that come from ancient Greek and have made their way into spoken standard Italian uh, and even some uh, regional varieties uh, similarly to what happened in English really because there are also a lot of words of Greek origin that found their way into English for example when you say the word philosophy or the word theocracy theology all of these words are Greek in origin but Italian being geographically so close to Greece in my opinion, has received even a stronger number or a stronger amount, a higher amount of uh, Greek loan words, although most of these are connected to ancient Greek. I'll talk a little bit about this in a second. Secondly, a lot of high school or secondary school students um, do have to study both Latin and Greek, depending on what uh, specific type of secondary school they choose to attend. Although it's important to say that the way we study these languages, both Latin and ancient Greek in high school or secondary school, it's mostly translating. So it's not like we get to speak these languages or to practice them in actual conversation. So at the end of the day, it's a language baggage that sort of enriches you culturally, but then you mostly forget after high school. Important to be transparent here. With that being said, how different are Greek and Italian from each other? Well, the reality is that even though both languages are Indo-European, they're only ever so slightly related in the sense that they still belong to two completely different subgroups or categories, namely the Romance language category and the Hellenic category, which means that the grammar is going to be different, the majority of words are going to be different and completely unrelated. And to add insult to injury, the writing systems are also completely different, utilizing a separate alphabet. And even though we will probably test it on this channel to make a separated video when I try and listen to Greek, what I'm expecting to happen based on my personal experience of the occasional times that I ran into a Greek speaker is that I will not be able to recognize a word. Or if I'm really, really lucky, um, if they use a word that has to do with the ancient Mediterranean, weapons and armor. Well, those words I know in Greek, so I might be able to pick them out and understand them, uh, but that's about it. Whereas if they are literally talking about what they ate that morning for breakfast, I'll have no idea. With that being said, there is something that we can look into that could make this video interesting, and perhaps even useful if you are a Romance language speaker, whether it be Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, Roma Romanian, French, and you're interested in actually starting to learn modern Greek. Pronunciation. Have you ever noticed that sometimes it happens that you have someone speaking Greek and someone hears that, doesn't exactly recognize the language and thinks, are these people from Spain? Have you ever noticed that? And the opposite also sometimes happens. The reason for that is because there are some common grounds when it comes to pronunciation, morphology, phonetics that are in common between Madrid Spanish or most widely Spain Spanish and Greek. For example, retracted S's. So what is a retracted S? Well, without going too technical, you have several possible ways to render an S sound and different languages render this sound in different ways. For example, modern Italian tends to render the S very similarly to how English does. So it's a frontal S, it's produced in the front of the mouth and it's pronounced S, like in sun. This when it comes to the majority of speakers in Italy, even though there are some speakers, particularly in the northeast and some areas of the northwest, where they actually do have a retracted S, which would make it in the same realm as the S used in Spain Spanish and the S used in Greek. Let me show you. So for those of you who have a good year, or maybe linguistic training, this is a sound in between the S, S, and the SH, SH which is rendered with sh in English. Let's try them all three together. S, sh, sh. Interestingly enough, this sh, so in between sound, is also used in Mandarin Chinese, even though it's written with an x. Like in the word xie xie, xie xie, or xiao, xiao. Both Greek and Spain Spanish use the retracted s, so the middle sound. Let me give you some examples. Habemos, podemos, los pimientos. 
this retracted S is not present in Latin American varieties of Spanish, and it becomes a full-on SH in some varieties of Portuguese. Now, Greek uses this SH sound a lot, which is why sometimes they get confused uh, from if someone hears the language spoken very fast from sort of afar. Unfortunately, if you're an Anglophone, you don't have this sound and you will have to learn it if you want to sound more like a Greek speaker. With that being said, as I was noting, in Italy it sort of depends what region you come from, but interestingly enough, there are a couple of sounds that as an Anglophone speaker you would be at an advantage, and me, as a speaker of standard Italian, I would be at a disadvantage. The following sounds. The D in modern Greek is pronounced like a THE in mother, so it's not pronounced DORI, but it's pronounced DORI, Dionysios, not Dionysios. Dionysios, Dionysios. Also, Greek has the th sound, just like the English word think. So it's a fricative, but interdental, like the word Athena, Athena, Theos, Theos. These two sounds can be difficult for a French speaker or an Italian, but they're definitely a piece of cake for an English speaker, and the th sound is pretty simple for a Spain-Spanish speaker who tend to pronounce the Z and the C with a th sound, like in the words corazón, conversación, gracias, gracias, and the D pronounced like a th, similarly to how they pronounce Madrid, Madrid, with kind of a small glottal stop in the Madrid accent for the final D not fully pronounced. Now, luckily for those who want to learn modern Greek, although it's kind of a shame for people who are interested into the linguistic evolutionary state of Greek, modern Greek is not a pitch accented language, whereas ancient Greek was, similarly to how modern Japanese is, uh, which has different pitches. Let me give you an example. Kami versus Kami watashi inu ashi ashiga katana, etc. Ancient Greek also had pitches. I'm not actually fully qualified to represent them here, but I can make a dedicated video together with Luke Ranieri, who is fully trained in the ancient pitched pronunciation of ancient Greek, particularly in Lucian pronunciation. If you're interested, let me know in the comments and we'll organize a little collaboration video. So, all in all, how difficult is Greek for an Italian? As difficult as it would be for a French or a Spanish speaker or an English speaker in the sense that we don't really get a very much of an advantage from our geographical proximity, if you will. The reason being that the overall differences between these two very distantly related languages are unfortunately so daunting that it would require basically an approach to a foreign language altogether, um, very differently to how, for example, learning Spanish or French would be for an Italian. I'd like to finish off by saying that even though we speak a lot about the differences between ancient Greek and modern Greek, probably that would require its own dedicated video because when we say modern Greek, it's not as modern as modern Italian is, in the sense that some of the characteristic or speaking evolutionary directions that modern Greek was taking when compared, or has taken when compared to ancient Greek, already started to happen, and the language spoken in a similar way to how modern Greek is spoken already existed in the 9th century AD. So, is it modern compared to the Lucian pronunciation? Sure. But, but is it modern compared to Italian? how modern and recent Italian is, as a unified language, I would say not that modern actually, it still is relatively ancient. But this is probably a topic for a dedicated video. For now, let me know if you're interested in learning Greek, let me know if you speak Greek and how you learnt it and what your first language is. And as always, thank you for joining Metatron's Academy.